I don't know how many of you really like to watch deer during the summertime. It's crazy because on the channel, as we get closer to hunting season, the amount of views and the amount of subscribers are actually engaging and watching just exponentially increase. And so in the off season, I say off season, maybe more like January, February, March, April, May, it goes down, June kind of levels off and it starts going back up again in July and it just launches the end of September and October. And so it makes you wonder how many people are actually really into their deer hunting during the summertime. But I think you should really pay attention to what's going on in the summertime with the mature bucks. And they'll tell you a lot. You know, for one, just for starters, mature bucks where they're at during the summertime and where they choose to spend their summer months typically is not where they're at during the fall. It's really enjoyable to watch that because then you learn about buck behavior, learn about what's good habitat to hunt, what's bad habitat to hunt. And it might be great habitat for July or August, but that doesn't mean it's good habitat. In fact, it's usually the opposite for the fall. But also watching deer during the summer. It could be you're watching them on trail cameras. It could be like us, we're watching them on trail cameras and we're going for summer rides and, and looking around. But bottom line is what happens during the summer, if you pay attention, can pay big dividends to your hunt during the fall. And really I'm talking about today when it comes to cold front hunting and hunting cold fronts and watching deer that move during cold fronts, even during the summertime. The same principles, the same ingredients that cause bucks to be on their feet and moving more, or at least moving more during daylight. Maybe they don't even move more in a 24 hour period. I think that's what's bad about a lot of science. They'll show that, well, bucks didn't move during that cold front anymore. Well, they just move more during daylight. And as hunters, that's what we care about. We don't care how much they move overall during the day. We just want to know when they're going to be on their feet in front of our tree stand during daylight and shooting hours. That's what actually matters. So when it comes to summer months, it's crazy because it's about two weeks ago, we had a flurry of really good bucks. I think it was four or five bucks or at least four years old to six years old. And they moved within about a 24 hour period in the evening and in the morning. It's because we had a major cold front. It was actually high 40s, around 50 during the summertime. That's pretty cold around here. Like last night, I think it was 64. Tonight, it's supposed to be in the 60s. It's supposed to be 85 to 90, 97 later this week. Terrible weather. I can't stand it. The bottom line is we don't get to see very many big bucks on our cameras either. We had one in the middle of the night last night, which was kind of cool, right in front of a blind, hitting a mock scrape, coming out of a bedding area, but he didn't choose to move till the middle of the night. He was probably laying back there, not doing much either. The bottom line is, is those same weather ingredients that moved here during the summer will move here during the fall. There are people out there that say that weather doesn't move deer or cause deer to move. That couldn't be further from the truth. Just look at the extremes in anything. Let's say it's 100 degrees in October, it's traditionally 65. It's going to slow the movement considerably. In fact, if it's during the rut, it'll push deer to breed or rut during the night. They'll still rot. They'll still breed but they're gonna do it at night when it's cooler. Blizzard, let's look at the other extreme. High winds, lots of snow, deer aren't going to move. We've all seen that. Heavy thunderstorms, extreme weather, lightning, pounding rain, hail, deer don't move. They really don't. High, high winds, they don't move much. Now they might move to get out of the wind. That's where some studies show that deer move a little bit more when it gets windier, but they're moving out of the wind. They're areas with hills. They're going to get on the lee side. That's why hunting in the lee side of a ridge system during high winds is an incredible opportunity for you. When we see the weather changing during the summertime, those same principles that put buck on their feet during July, August, September, will put bucks on their feet in October, November, December. Well, it's end of July, and I hope most of you by this point in the year have been able to check out our food plot seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. We've had clients and customers in almost 50 states by now. And the cool thing is, you know, I don't like you to pay shipping if you don't have to. We're not going to have a giant dealer network. That's not the way we are. We built the business on experience and providing good information and quality products. People ordered online. But if you live in the southeast Minnesota, southwest Wisconsin area, Nelson Agri Center out of Viroqua and Prairie du Chien is our only dealer in the country. I don't know if that's the way it'll be in the future, but they're very important to us because people in this region can actually travel to them, whether you're in Northeast Iowa or Northwest Illinois, and pick up that seed without shipping. So give them a call, check them out, and check out the food plot company. Check out the website if you haven't done so already. And I really appreciate you guys 
giving us a look for your food plot planting needs this season. What to look for? I look for hot weather, right? Like right now. Like we have the opportunity to go out and look for deer tonight. Dylan's filming here for two days. We have the opportunity to go out tonight. And what's the highest supposed to be today, Dylan? 90? Uh, 93, I think. Yeah, yeah that sucks. Yeah. So the, the potential of big bucks being on their feet out in the daylight when we drive around and look for them is very low. Now, next week, it gets down into the low 80s. So at some point in there, there's going to be a big change. I'm looking for a change when the weather drops 8 to 10 degrees or more. When you get some volatility of weather, let's say we have an extreme thunderstorms, hail, wind come through. Lots of lightning. After that calms and clears and the temperature drops, you're going to find great movement. And that's the same conditions you look for during the uh, during the fall too and during the deer season, even during the winter time. Now, sometimes when a blizzard's coming through or big storms, deer will feed on the front side. That's that, you know, easterly wind, northeast winds, not terrible winds. It's seven, eight degrees cooler than it was the evening before and deer on their feet. But deer, even with the same barometric pressure, they know whether they could be out in the middle of the fields feeding or if they're gonna get caught out in the middle of the fields during a big blizzard, because they don't do that. When there's a giant blizzard coming through, they're not out feeding. How many times have you ever seen that where there's snow coming down, it's three or four inches of wet snow, it's kind of calm, it's around 30, not very windy, and the fields are full of deer. They know that they could be out in those fields, they're not gonna get caught. It doesn't matter if the barometric pressure is the same. They know by wind speed, moisture, direction of wind, they're out there 365. So they know any change in those conditions, they know how to read those conditions. They're probably just something they feel, but they definitely don't have a barometric pressure meter in their head and that's why you don't follow barometric pressure you don't follow the moon now the moon might make deer feed more at night which makes them bed down more in the first feeding of the day which would be early morning they feed five times in 24 hour period so if they feed heavily in one or two of those feedings they're going to feed lighter on the next one hope that makes sense just like you or i if we have a big thanksgiving meal we usually don't do it again at 10 o'clock at night that'll create some feeding binges but deer are going to still react during daylight more if it's cool or not. So you could have a great, quote, great moon phase, whatever that is. And if it's super hot, windy temperatures, that doesn't mean deer are going to be out. I've seen people waste a lot of vacation days on that in the past, right? Moon chart says it's good to go. So let's take a day off. And they don't see anything because it's hot and windy in the middle of October. Same with barometric pressure. You could have all the skies clear. It's cold. Temperature just dropped 15 degrees, but because another front's coming in two days, shows pressure low, and a lot of deer barometers will show that it's not a good time for deer to move because the pressure's low. Instead, if you just look at those conditions, you have clearing skies, clearing storms, and cold weather, it's time to go out and hunt. Deer are going to be on their feet, no matter if the pressure's low or high. You can't miss those days. That algorithm I wrote for outdoor life in 2016 it's a long time ago it seems like now for the november rut issue and i talked about the importance of temperature change wind speed change the importance of consistency when you have the same stable temperatures it doesn't matter if it's all 50 around 50 degrees all around 60 all around 70 it's all relative when it drops 15 degrees deer notice a difference especially when it's been calm for five days or more deer just understand boy they get lulled into this pattern all of a sudden the weather changes, it wakes them up, something happens. And think about it, when major weather goes through, they miss feedings, they feed five times in 24 hour periods, they're not going out in the big fields when it's super windy, super hot, extreme weather, thunder, lightning, blizzard, snow, hail, sleet, whatever it might be, they're missing feedings. That means they need to replenish that energy. They're burning energy because they're sitting and there's a lot of stress, commotion, noise in the woods. And they're just sitting there. They're not out at their quality food sources. There's a lot of stress. Cold a lot of times is zapping more energy out of them. So they can't wait to put the feedback on and start moving. When you add that to the rut, it really explodes things. And that's why we wrote that algorithm and we infused it into HuntCast through HuntWise. So I urge you to check HuntWise out. It's the only HuntCast out there that really predicts what really happens with the weather and how it puts deer on their feet. 
So something you can trust. I have a lot of people compare that to other uh, HuntCast type features and products and apps, and they'll always switch over to HuntWise if they're comparing the two to that HuntCast feature. It's very, very important. They'll put deer in the feed. I hope you guys check that out. So what does that mean? Follow the trail cameras. Trail cameras will show you. You know, I urge you to look at when did you get your favorite trail cameras four years ago? Check out the weather then. Check out weather underground. It's a way that you can look up historical weather patterns even to the day. Great grandpa shot a giant buck in 1972. Go check out the weather. Find out, you know, it's one thing if they're just driving deer and pushing deer around or if it's coming into a bait pile at night, but it's just cruising conditions, rutting deer. You shot a big one eight years ago. Check out the weather that day. Check out what it did the, the few days prior, what the wind speeds changed to. I'm not talking calm wind. You want to see a change in wind. It could have been 32 miles an hour, now it's 18 miles an hour. You're going to recognize that change. They'll be on their feet more. They're just suppressed because of high winds. That change will put on their feet. Watch the trail cameras. You can learn a lot. Look at your favorite buck pictures. There's a lot. Of, there's been studies in the past, but there's a lot of deer and hunting season, especially in the upper half of the country, upper third of the country. You don't see a lot of mature buck movement during daylight if the temperatures are above 50 to 55 degrees. You might see that same pattern too. We see that too. So check that out. Just check your trail cameras. It's really cool about that. The date, the time, the weather. You can see everything. But you can really look at these apps and look at historical data and follow those trends. So what does that mean? Don't scout? Are we not going to go around and look out tonight and, and look the fields and relax? No, we're going to still go out. We enjoy doing that. It's fun to go on an evening cruise with a family. My little boy Jackson loves being out there looking for deer, sitting with us, looking around. We go on the back dirt roads around here. It's a fun family activity to do together. Not telling you not to. Hunting. You know, maybe that's your time off. Still go when it's bad weather, of course. If that's your only time you have. But try to slant your best stands to the best weather. Follow something like HuntCast. I really predict when to get out there. Watch for those weather patterns right now during the summer. The habitat patterns, too. And they'll tell you where to find or not find big bucks in the fall. There's a lot of reason for that. Learn when to hit your best stands this fall by watching the weather. And a lot of those clues can be given to you right now during the summer months.